it just doesn't matter where you're at right now. If you'll let God in, He can bring total, complete restoration to your life. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past if you'll just let God in. What happens in our lives when we've got a big, huge mess and a holy God intervenes? I love that thought. The Bible says, a thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came. There we have that holy interruption. The devil's doing his best to bring destruction, and Jesus interrupts the whole thing when he shows up. He says, but I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. And I want to tell you that if in your life right now you feel like that all you have is destruction and misery and worry and anxiety and relationship problems and a broken heart, Jesus came that you might enjoy your life. You don't even have to be rid of all your problems to enjoy your life in God's economy. God is a God of restoration. We read in Psalm 23 when we opened the conference tonight that He restores our soul. I had a broken soul. I'd been abused by my father and abandoned by my mother and married the first guy that came along and he ran around with other women and ended up going to prison. By the time I was 23, I was broken in my soul. I didn't know how to think right. I felt wrong about everything. And my, my will was all messed up. I, I didn't know how to, to give in. I didn't know how to submit. I only knew about what I wanted and fighting to get my way all the time. And that's, that's hard when you try to live life that way. And I can honestly say that He has restored my soul. And I don't even know how to tell you how grateful I am for what God has done in my life. And I want to assure you that what God does for one person, He will do for anybody. For anybody. And you have to reach out and take hold of that tonight and believe that. That there's no problem too great for God to fix. I love 1 John 4.4. 4. We have already defeated and overcome the Antichrist, the devil. Already defeated the devil. Not trying to defeat the devil. We have already defeated the devil because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The Bible says we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. If God be for me, who can be against me? You know, when you get hooked up with God, he has a different kind of math than what they have in the world. In the world, you can have problems, 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 disaster, disaster, problems, and it adds up to the biggest mess you've ever seen. Let's watch this little ledger that I had them make that shows you a little bit about God's arithmetic. I think you'll get the idea of what I'm talking about by taking a look at this. All these problems. Subtotal, overwhelmed. Tax, exhausted. Total, too much to bear. Discounts from God, forgiveness, grace, mercy, hope, faith, love, peace. <laughs> Uh-oh. Subtotal, relieved. Tax, restored. Total is freedom. Total savings, your life. Amen. <laughs> I was just thinking about that, that, you know, arithmetic changes when you get hooked up with God. I love the little phrase in the Bible that simply says, but God. Because I really want you to know that no matter what else is going on, when God intervenes, when a holy God intervenes, and you surrender to His intervention, that all changes. Acts chapter 7, verse 9. We're going to put some of these up on the screen. Acts chapter 7, verse 9. And the patriarchs 
Jacob's sons, boiling with envy and hatred and anger, sold Joseph into slavery in Egypt, but God, everybody say, but God. <laughs> Here this, this youngest son in the family, all the other brothers are jealous of him because he was kind of dad's pet. I don't think that meant that he loved him any more than he loved the other boys, but he was the baby and probably got by with a little bit more than the rest of them and, you know, maybe got a few things that the rest of them didn't get. And you know, if you're the youngest in a group of siblings that you probably heard that all your life too. Oh yeah, you got everything. We had to work for everything. You just get everything handed to you on a platter. Amen. Our youngest son finally said one time, I can't help when I was born. I can't help it. Well, Joseph was like that. You know, he was the youngest and his dad gave him a really pretty coat and he wore that coat and I tell you, it was just burning his brothers. And they got so angry, so mad, so full of hatred that they took him off and they sold him to slave traders and they told his father that he'd been killed by wild animals. They brought back his coat with blood all over it. But God had his eye on Joseph, and God gave him favor. It is amazing what happens in our lives when God gives us favor, and he will give anybody favor that will believe for it. Every day of your life, you should confess and say and pray, I have favor with God everywhere that I go. I'm telling you what, God can open doors that will absolutely leave you with your mouth hanging open in awe. Absolutely amaze you. My son just told me last week that we've been given favor now in India and a woman has been put in a high position of authority who just happens to really love me and she has opened the door now for us to be on the government owned number one national television station in India and now we're already on a lot in India we already cover a lot of India but going on this station now is going to immediately double the number of people we're reaching we will now reach 850 million of the 1.2 billion people in India and we'll be broadcasting in 16 different languages that's favor let me tell you something. A woman from Fenton, Missouri, who barely knew what, what sanity was 30 years ago, does not preach the gospel to the entire nation of India if God's not in it. When God gives you favor, the devil's got to get out of the way. Amen? But God. Joseph started out in a pit and he ended up in the palace. He had more authority in Egypt than anybody other than Pharaoh. And the only thing I can find, now I want you to get this part because this is important for all of us, the only thing that I can find that Joseph ever did that might have been right was he somehow maintained a good attitude no matter what was going on in his life. Come on, you didn't hear me. I said, the one thing he did was he kept a good attitude no matter what was going on in his life. I said, the one thing he did was he kept a good attitude no matter what was going on in his life. And you know what else he did? Everywhere he went, he was good to people. When he was in prison for 13 years for something that he didn't do, he helped a baker and a butler get out of there and they promptly forgot all about him. I tell you what, if you've got trouble in your life, the best thing you can do is keep, keep a good attitude and be good to everybody you can be good to. If you'll do those two things, there's no way the devil can hold you in bondage. Did you hear me? Don't make me start over. I said, if you've got a big mess in your life, the only thing you've got to do is get a good attitude, keep a good attitude, and be good to everybody you can. And if you will, there's no way the devil can hold you in bondage.
He just can't do it. And I love the story of Daniel's friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh my gosh, I get so excited every time I read this story and when I try to preach on it, it just absolutely is amazing. So you're just going to have to bear with me because I'm going to preach on it for here a minute. First of all, you can tell a lot about a man by his friends. And you know, Daniel had good friends. They were men of integrity. Men who kept their word, who did what they said that they were going to do. They determined to do what was right, even if it meant they were going to get in trouble for it. I wish we could see more of that in our society today, don't you? In Daniel chapter 3, beginning in some verse, which I'll tell you about in just a minute. It starts actually in verse 10, but we don't want to go through all of those. So Daniel chapter 3, and we'll begin in about verse 22. But what was happening was the king had given a command that everybody had to bow down to him, a statue of him. Now they couldn't bow to anyone other than him. Well, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were God-fearing men, and they said, we won't do it. But the king said, anybody who refuses to do this will be thrown into the burning, fiery furnace. Now, j just think about it for a minute. If there was a fiery furnace over there, and all you had to do was stay out of it, was kneel down to some statue, I'd like to think that we would all be as strong as they were. And so let's look at what happened. Therefore, the king's commandment was urgent. I'm starting in verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame and the sparks from the fire killed those men who handled Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king saw and was astonished, and he jumped up and he said to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Not only were they in the fire, they tied them up with ropes and they were bound. And he answered, behold, I see four men and they're loose, walking in the midst of the fire and they're not hurt. And the fourth has the form of the Son of God. But God in the fiery furnace, but God was in that furnace with them. And the thing that I love about this is while they were in the worst time of their life, that's when they were loosed from their bondages. You think there's nothing happening to you while you got all this mess going on in your life, perhaps? And sometimes it's those very things that God uses to break the bondages off of your life, to set you free from things. They went in bound, they came out loose. And the good news is, if you turn to the next page, it says, and when they came out, they weren't scorched. They didn't even smell like smoke. Woo! Hallelujah! You know what? I don't like to be crude, but I think it makes a point, so I'll just say it. I realized last year that when I was doing my testimony that I had been more than abused, I'd been raped by my father. Abuse is almost a nice, acceptable word now. I've been abused, you've been abused, we've been abused. But I actually counted it up because I know how regular it was and even the days that it took place. And over a period of about five years, my own father raped me over 200 times. And that's shocking to think that a person could have any sanity or any kind of mind left or any kind of life left. And yet, I came out and I don't even smell like smoke. Come on. Somebody better shout. I don't even smell like smoke. You could never tell from looking at me. You could never tell from talking to me. If I didn't tell you, you'd never know. You'd probably think I was a highly educated, very privileged 
person to have ever risen to this place in life. <laughs> Man, is that ever far from the truth. I wanted to go to college, but I couldn't go to college because I had to get away from my father and go to work. I had to get out and take care of myself so I didn't have to depend on him. And my teachers just pleaded with me to, to go to college on a journalism scholarship. They recognized that I had a writing gift, but I couldn't go. So I don't have a degree in writing or journalism nor have I ever had a lesson in how to write a book. Yet I just finished my 90th book. And I'm not trying to brag on me, I'm bragging on God. I'm saying, but God. <laughs> you see, it just doesn't matter where you're at right now. If you'll let God in, He can bring total, complete restoration to your life. It doesn't matter what you've done in the past if you'll just let God in. It doesn't matter what has been done to you in the past. If you'll just decide to have a good attitude, start being a blessing to somebody else, and let God in, but God will fix it all. This room is full of stories. Probably stories that would make what I went through sound like a party. I'm not deceived into thinking that I'm the only one that ever, have a hard, had, ever had a hard time. Many of you have been through unbelievably tragic and horrible things. And yet God is so proud of you because tonight you come to worship Him. Tonight you come to learn more about Him. Where so many people in the world that have been hurt are just out getting drunk and drugging up and doing every wrong thing that they can possibly do, and that's not their answer. You're here where you can find an answer. But God. I love Ephesians. It says, even while we were yet in our sins, God sent His only Son to die for us. But God, but God interrupted that cycle of sin and misery and wretchedness in our life. Light shines into the darkness. Life comes into the death type experiences. And when God shows up, really nothing else matters. What happens when a holy God intervenes? How about a little bit of encouragement for those of you who or maybe married to someone that's not serving God. Let's remember Paul for a minute who was aggressively seeking to kill Christians, to torment them. He was at Stephen's stoning and he enjoyed the whole thing. He was a very religious man. He had a serious problem with pride. He was very proud of everything he'd ever done. He got his whole worth and value in his social group and, and his religiosity. And he's having a horseback ride, which is the way they traveled, and he was going from town to town, and suddenly God showed up and knocked him off his horse, blinded him, spoke to him, and you just never know what might happen to that one that you love if you just keep praying for them. Because let me tell you something, I don't care how mean and ornery they are and how opposed they are to God, if God shows up, a holy intervention is going to change things in their life and it can happen fast. Amen? But God. They told me recently that the number one thing that we have prayer requests for at the office is people calling in and asking prayer for their loved ones. I imagine so many people's hearts are just breaking for their children and the person they're married to and their moms and dads and their sisters and brothers and their friends. And When you know what you can have in God and you see people living such miserable lives and you can't get through to them, it's heartbreaking. But let me tell you something, God can. God can. Start praying for a holy intervention. God, bring a holy intervention into our lives. Do something that only you can do. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 7, 5 and 6. 
2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 5 and 6. For even when we arrived in Macedonia, our bodies had no ease or rest. Now watch this. But we were oppressed in every way and afflicted at every turn, fighting and contentions without dread and fear within. Pretty miserable. But God. I love it. I, I tell you, I could run the building here if I keep this up. But God, who comforts and encourages and refreshes and cheers the depressed and the sinking, comforted and encouraged and refreshed and cheered us by the arrival of Titus. They were depressed. They were sinking. They were in dread. They were in fear. They were discouraged. But God. You know what? When you need encouragement, don't get mad at people who aren't encouraging you. I did that for years. Well, I need to be encouraged. Well, you know, people don't always know you need to be encouraged when you need to be encouraged. And not only that, they're probably sitting somewhere needing to be encouraged themselves. Just because somebody smiles at you at church on Sunday morning and says, praise the Lord, that don't mean they don't have problems. I know, I took my church face to church with me every week for years and years. Now, well, praise the Lord, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. And then get back in the car and fight with Dave all the way home. <laughs> I know how that works. And I've learned to go to God. God, I need to be encouraged. I need some appreciation. Whatever I need, I can go to God with it, and He may give it to me supernaturally, or He may give it to me through a person, but I found out to keep getting mad at Dave or my friends or this or that because they weren't giving it to me. All I was doing was making the problem worse. we got to stop looking to people to get our needs met, and we have to look to God. God will meet our needs very often through people, but it offends Him when we go to them instead of going to Him. And that's enough right there to set somebody free this weekend. You could just go ahead and go home and you would have got what you came for. Because some of you are mad at somebody all the time because they're not keeping you feeling the way you'd like to feel. Stop making somebody else responsible for your happiness. Just get happy. And maybe stay happy while you're at it. Amen. But God. The apostles were in jail for doing God's will. But God sent an angel and opened the door. You know, blessings are often mixed with trouble when we serve God. It's hard when you're doing what's right and you don't get a right result. You know, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace, the furnace was already hot. I mean, it was before they got in it. The thing was already as hot as hot could be, and when they refused to bow down, which was the right thing to do, the Bible says that the king turned the furnace up seven times hotter than it was before. I've had a lot of times like that in my life where I felt like I was doing the right thing, and yet it seemed like I was the one that got the trouble. Well, what do you do when you're in times like that? You just keep trusting God that He's got His hand on you, He knows what He's doing, and there may be something he's got to work out of you before he gives you the breakthrough that you need. Believe it or not, God uses the furnace to loose the bondages in our lives. We don't grow when everything is easy. Well, thank you for your tremendous response. They were loosed in the furnace. They were in the furnace when they got loose from their bondages. Can anybody hear me? They weren't laying on the couch eating donuts and watching TV. They got loosed in the furnace. They weren't out in the mall shopping. They got loosed in the furnace. It took me a lot of years to realize that what I thought was my greatest enemies in the long run were my best friends. The Saul's in my life got the Saul's out of me. And if you don't know who Saul was in the Bible, just we don't have time for that message. But God's not always going to surround you with people that are going to treat you the way you'd like to be treated. 
Sometimes he surrounds you with people that don't treat you all that great, and then you find out what's really in you. Well, we need to realize that no matter what we've gone through, God does have a plan for our lives that is far greater than anything we can probably imagine. And we need to pray for God's holy intervention in our lives and into our problems.